My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I welcome you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's reflection will come from Book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, from verse 11. And the theme of the contemplation is the reason why. The reason why. Let's go into prayer. Loving Father, I, your worthy servant, stand before your presence to thank you for all you have been doing for us. To thank you for being in our presence tonight. We appreciate your divine plan for your children. We appreciate your divine plan for us. You have a reason for creating each and every one of us on earth. We, you have a reason for creating us. You created us out of love. You created us in your own image and likeness. For us to know you. For us to love you. For us to worship you and adore you. To live with you forever and ever after our life on earth. This is the purpose for which you created us. This is the reason why you made us to be. This is the purpose for which we are created. Father, may we not lose sight of this purpose. May we not lose focus for which you've created us. You have a reason for everything. You have a reason for creating this world. And after creating this world, you handed over everything to your children, man and woman alike, for our own consumption. You told us to conquer the earth. You told us to manage everything accordingly. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we bow down before you. We kneel before your presence to thank you. You are the great fashionos, the summum bono of our life. Then smobiles and similar. Father, we, we, we thank you. We appreciate your beingness. We appreciate your divine power. We thank you for being with us tonight. We have an appointment with you, Father. And we have come because we have the reason why we are here. We are here to worship you. We are here because we love you. We are here because we want to adore you. We are here because we want to glorify your name. It is not by power or by might, but by the Spirit that you have gathered us together. Father, we thank you for your divine benevolence. Father, we thank you for this divine arrangement. Because you so much love us, you have brought us together. He said that we are two or three are gathered in my name and you are there. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We honor you. We appreciate you, Father. It is out of love that you give us the air we breathe. You are the oxygen of our life. You are the quality of our being. It is because of us that you sent your only begotten son. Why? Because you want to redeem us. Why? Because you love us. Why? Because you want to save us from eternal damnation. This is the reason why you sent your only begotten son to save us from the hands of the devil, from the hands of Lucifer, from the hands of the agents of Satan. Father, you have your reason why you do what you are doing. Who can advise you, Father? 
You are an all-knowing God. Who can advise you? Before ever we came to be, you were already in existence. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end of life. Father, we come before you in humility and reverence to thank you for allowing us to call your name. In spite of our unworthiness, you are always giving us divine invitation. Divine invitation to come around you. You said, we are two or three are gathered in my name, you are there. You know that there will be a time where two will be there, present and worshipping you. You know that there will be a time where three will be there, or more than three, praising and worshipping you. No wonder why John chapter 4 from verse 24 to 26 says, The time has come when true worshippers shall worship you in spirit and truth. Father, we are doing it on this line. In the Bible, you say that there will be a time where we shall not go to Jerusalem or to the mountain. Father, you foresaw everything. That's the reason why Jesus Christ said all these things we are now reiterating in the Bible. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We can't thank you enough. We can't even define the kind of joy we have whenever we hear that we shall go to the house of the Lord. There is a kind of joy that encapsulates our being, O oh Father. The reason why we go to you, we come to you, we bow before you, is because of an overwhelming joy. We are so excited, Father, to be in your presence. As I'm in front of you in this chapel, presenting before your children the food for thought for this evening, we are thanking you. Some of them are in front of their altar. Some of them are relaxing in their car after the fatigue of their daily work because they know that you are everywhere, Father. You are everywhere. And that your children so much have strong faith in you. They know where to go and know where to search you. They know where to seek you and they know where to find you. We are in a contemplative mood, Father. We are in a reflective mood, Father. We are in a meditative mood, Father. That's the reason why we have gathered. I pray for your divine blessing upon us. I pray for your divine intervention upon us. We present before you many things that are worrying us and bothering us. There is always a reason why we knock at your door. There is always, always a reason why we knock at your door. Everybody has something to offer. Everybody has something to tell you. Because you are the one that invited us in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 to ask and we shall receive, to seek and we shall find, and to knock and the door will be opened. Father, we pray that you open the door of blessing for your children. Open the door of blessing for your children. That every day we shall continue to receive your abundant grace. Father, we thank you. Father, we glorify you. Father, we adore you. Father, we thank you for the wonders of our being. You are the shepherd of your flock. You know the reason why you shepherd us. Because you love us. You know the reason why you take us like your lamb. You, you, you always place us where the green pastures are to give us repose. You say, come to me, all that are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Because you know the reason why you are inviting us. When we go to human beings, they charge us money. When we go to human beings, they deceive your children. But you are always faithful. That's the reason why we are always coming to you. You always promise and you fulfill your promise. That's the reason why we are here. 
That's the reason why we trust you. Why are we following you, Jesus? We have our reason for following you. Because you are the way. Divine GPS is always correct. You are the way. You can never deceive us. Divine GPS is always correct. You are the truth. Very honest father. That knows when and where to feed your children. Look at the woman of Zarephath. She was not thinking about anything. Only preparing for herself and the child to die. You were wherever you were. And you were able to send Elijah to her. Sometimes we are not even thinking about anything. And you bring surprise to us. What an enigma. Father, we thank you. You are full of mystery. We cannot fathom the unfathomable. That's why we need divine revelation. We thank you for tonight, Father. Because you are the awesome God we know. You always surprise us. The reason why Hannah went to the, to the Jerusalem, to the temple, is to pray. And you surprised her. She has reason for going there. To seek, to seek answers for what was going on in her life. And we were able to surprise her with a son. Father, everybody has a reason for coming to your tabernacle. Everybody has a reason for being, for worshiping and adoring you. For going for adoration. To knock at your door in prayer. Let our coming tonight, O oh Father, bring us blessing, Father. Let our coming tonight, Father, Bring us divine grace. Let our coming tonight, Father, bring us your divine protection. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, there is time for everything. There is a reason why God created you, child of God. No matter what you are going through, Remember tonight the reason why. There is a reason why God created you. If you have not fulfilled your reason for being in existence, you are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. Whether you are very sick or whether you are healthy, there is a purpose for which you are here. And when you have accomplished your purpose, God may still want you to be alive to enjoy the reason why. Or may say, good and faithful servant, come and get the eternal kingdom. Whether we are alive or dead, we belong to God. We live our life every day in Christ. And that will help us to understand the enigma of life. Everybody has a purpose for which God made him or her. Including the people you regard as handicapped or disabled. You may see them as disabled, but in the eyes of the Lord they are able. Say, say amen somebody. You may see somebody as disabled, but in the eyes of the Lord that person is able. You do not underestimate divine creation. You have a purpose for your existence. Remember the, the, the little boy, deaf and dumb, and they were asking, who sinned, whether the parents or the boy? He said, nobody sinned, but for God to take glory at his own time. Sometimes we may not understand why things happen to us. We may not understand the reason why things are happening the way they are. They, they are. But uncertainties in life are certain in the eyes of God. Uncertainties in life are very certain in the eyes of the Lord. There is a reason for every season on earth. 
God made every season for a purpose. We have winter season. We have spring season. We have autumn season. And we have summer. The child of God, in every case, God is in charge. In any situation, God is in charge, child of God. God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do in every situation? So, child of God, do not lose hope. Do not lose hope when things are not going the way you want it. God is in charge of your life. God is in charge of your life. Even the animals, they have a purpose in this life. They have reason for being in this life. Animals have reason for being in this life. All we have to do is to ask God, what's the reason for me in life? What do you want me to do? And we shall get our answer, for God is in charge of our life. Even the animals, the birds of the air, they have reason for being in this life. For instance, without the agents of pollination, how can we get our flowers and our fruits? Tell yourself that there is a reason why you are who you are. Tell yourself there is a reason why you are who you are. There is a reason why you are who you are. You did not come to this world by yourself. You came through divine arrangement. There is a reason for everything. Even animals have reason for their actions. The dog barks for a reason. The lion roars for a reason. The cat mews for a reason. I was watching a family dog. Look at this. A dog was guiding a child. Some people may have asked a dog was guiding a child, and the owner left the, the little baby at the house and went somewhere, maybe for God. When the lady came back, she saw blood everywhere in the parlor and around the entrance of the house, not knowing what it was. She stepped into the house and did not see her child on his bed. She presumed that the dog had eaten him. She went into the kitchen and put a strong weapon and knocked the dog on the head and the dog died. Look at that. When she had killed the dog, she then started searching for her baby and saw where the dog kept the baby and found. The child was safe. Then she looked at the corner and saw a big snake that crept into their house to attack the baby, and the dog fought the, the snake 
And in the course of their fight, the, the, the dog sensed that uh, the, 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 the snake was going where the baby was and was able to take away the baby from the bed and fling the baby somewhere and was still attacking the, the snake. When the dog saw the owner, he was just waving the, the, the tail to welcome the, the owner. And his mouth was full of blood. And the blood was everywhere. The woman did not even think about any other thing but to conclude that her child was dead. All she did was to go and kill the dog without even investigating, without even thinking about any other thing, without even investigating whether the dog really ate the baby or not. Look at that. Sometimes investigation attracts sympathy. Investigation attracts sympathy, child of God. Sometimes we take drastic measures for a reason. Sometimes our reason may not be cogent. You have to ask yourself, what's your reason for doing certain things? Why do you react without investigation? Why do you take action without any precaution? Why do you take action without investigating? Sometimes investigation attracts sympathy. Investigation attracts sympathy, child of God. No matter your reason why you respond to certain situations, you have to investigate. Don't just act without investigating. You may make mistake of your life. Look at this poor dog. This poor dog was waiting for kudos that he did, he did a very good job only to be killed for no just cause. When the, the poor woman saw the big snake, she was afraid even to, to remove the snake from the house. How the, the snake managed to come into the house, only God knows. But the dog was overprotective and was able to save the child. And when the dog was waiting for the owner to give him kudos, what he got was dead. What he got was death. Be in the shoe of the dog. And look at that woman and say, what have I done to you? The dog could not talk. The, God, the dog could not even defend himself. The defenseless dog knew what he would have done. He would have attacked the lady because Every, every dog, including animals or even or human beings, they have instinct of self-preservation. But out of love and obedience, the dog allowed the owner to hit him. And he died in active service with the owner and for the owner. Just think about it for a while. Sometimes we kill someone it's not just when you pick up a gun and kill somebody that you have killed somebody. Some people kill someone with their mouth. Some people, some people kill someone with their mouth. You accuse your son for no just cause. You accuse your daughter for no just cause. You accuse your husband for no just cause. You accuse your wife for no just cause. You accuse your in-law for no just cause. Why? What's the reason why you can do all these things? You don't investigate. 
You just act upon what you are thinking in that your little head. You don't pray before you act. You don't think before you talk. What do you expect? Poor judgment. Poor judgment. Let tonight be a wake-up call for you, child of God. Sometimes we have poor judgment. We reason poorly. We respond to stimuli like an animal. We have reasoning faculty. And above all, we are spiritual beings. Allow God to be in your life. When you are in a difficult situation, take in deep breath and breathe out. If there is water, sip water and then ask God for discernment. Think about something that can be reasonable. Don't just act out of anger. Look at this poor dog, for instance. If this dog were to be a human being, that was gone. You can imagine the poor dog could not even respond. The poor dog could not even explain himself what happened and why there was blood all over the place. The woman did not even give the, the, the dog chance to, to, to act like a dog, to show the woman. Because there are many ways animals show certain things. All you have to do is to pay attention if you have trained your dog well. The dog was so excited, wagging the tails, looking at the, the, the poor woman. And you can imagine the kind of sound the dog will be making, the hissing sound. Because sometimes when they have done something good, there is a kind of sound that comes from them. But this woman did not pay attention to all those things. What beclouded her was the blood. You may not blame the woman for, for one reason or the other. But at the same time, the woman would have looked around to make sure that the, 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 at least this, to see the, 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 the baby or what, whether the parts of the baby or even the clothing and so on. If at all the dog ate the, 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 the baby or harmed the baby. There's no way he could, the dog would also eat the, the dress. So when the lady f was faced with the, 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 the big stag, she was so scared and was wishing that the dog would be alive. But the dog had already done, done the, the damage on the, on the snake. And the, the, the snake, because the snake was uh, 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 breathing for the, gasping for the last breath, that's why the snake was moving all over the place and the, the blood was everywhere. This is the reason why the dog did what it did. But this woman, I don't know what became of them because I didn't follow the story, the rest of the story. But you can imagine the little we saw and heard tonight, what transpired. No matter your reason, child of God, know that some other person has his or her own reason for doing certain things. This dog had its own reason for doing what it did that very day. Unfortunately, the dog was already dead. Sometimes we are not patient with ourselves when we have already made up our mind to act. This dog was very nice to the family and overprotective of the people in that house. That was the reason why the dog fought to the nail to, to kill the invader. There was, a, there was a reason why the, the blood was all over the place. One was supposed to have looked around and pick up the pieces. But unfortunately, the woman's reason for reacting was based on pseudo-alarm in, in, her, in her memory. Every mother has strong instinct of self-preservation when it comes to their children. That's why I so said we, we may not blame her too much. Even the mad woman 
mad woman also overprotect her own child from invaders, no matter your reason for planning to remove the baby from her. People from Africa will understand what I'm saying. Before you remove a child from a mad woman, it's very difficult. She will fight the invaders to, with, her, with her, last, her last power and strength. She's not reasoning the way we are reasoning. Animals do the same. If female chicken hatches and moves around with the little ones, she pursues everybody close to them. The same thing is applicable to other animals in the forest. Therefore, we have to recognize that everybody has a reason for doing what he or she is doing. All you need to do is to ask questions. Ask for the reason why one does what he or she does. You will be surprised to get different answers. You may be surprised to react differently. We are different from each other. We are not at the same frequency when it comes to how we respond to actions and reactions from people. Child of God. If you have no genuine reason for bringing someone to overseas, for instance, please do not attempt to do that kind of half charity. I repeat. If you have not prepared for someone very well, home and abroad, and you say you want to help someone, and you are not prepared enough, please don't do that. All fingers are not equal. All fingers are not equal. And if someone is trying to help you for one reason or the other, and you are not able to obey the person, listen to the person, to the person, telling you about the situation where he or she is. Do not follow the person. Some people are very recalcitrant. Some are urchins. They don't listen to advice. You are an adult. You are an adult. Not every adult reasons very well. Not every adult is wise. You have to listen to someone Especially if you are moving with someone to a country that you have never been. Don't say that this person is controlling you. Am I not an adult? There will be a time where you will be independent and then you can, you can exhibit your, your adultness. But for a purpose, for a reason, always pay attention to that person that is bringing you to a new place you have never been in your life. Always be humble. All fingers are not equal. Experience is the best teacher. Someone that has been in one country more than you will know better. Listen to that person. Try to learn from that person. Try to learn from that person. Study the environment you are to work or live in before you start making your move or saying your own reason why you don't listen again or pay attention. There was a man that had a reason why he brought someone to overseas. I will not mention the town or name. But just listen to this and get, get something from it. This man had a reason why he, he brought someone from, from home. To assist the man to become somebody valuable for himself and his family. He came over and lost focus. He started following bad gang. And no longer listening to the man that helped him to come over. He started dis disrespecting the man that brought him over to overseas. Eventually the person landed into the jail. Served his jail term came out and started telling people 
that the man that brought him to overseas abandoned him. And he had no alternative than to join gangs. Look at that. Within your heart, you know that you are the cause of your problem. And you are trying to blame someone for what you have done. And you are not telling the whole truth. People buy into gossip without investigating matters. Investigation is very important. Investigation attracts sympathy. I pray for such people that genuinely brought someone into the country or all over Europe or Asia to assist someone and to make him better and the person disappoints, has disappointed him or her. I pray for healing for you. I pray for double blessing and double portion for you. That God will bless you and vindicate you in the mighty name of Jesus. Your sweat shall never be in vain. Your intention will never be in vain in the mighty name of Jesus. This night is for you and, and you will be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Some people are, are good in gossiping and tarnishing the image of someone that helped him or her. Father, you have a reason for creating us. Yes, you told us to love our neighbors as ourselves, but some people have been wounded badly that they are asking questions. Father, heal such people in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't inflict wounds upon wounds to your brother or your sister. Some people are wicked. That's not the way you are. That's not the purpose for which God created you. You are a human being. You are a good man. You are a good woman. What came over you? Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 says, For everything there is a reason. For everything there is a season. A time for every matter under heaven. When the time comes for God to bless you, nobody can stop it. There is a reason why God has placed you in that family. There is a reason why God has brought you together to marry. There is a reason why you are in that company. There is a reason why you are in that work. See yourself as a missionary wherever you are. And that will help you to understand your struggle. If you are not seeing yourself as a missionary in wherever you are or wherever you are working, you may, uh, when you are having problems, it will be paining you and you will be growing tiny. But when you see yourself as a missionary, even in your marriage or wherever you are working, that will help you to understand that you will be able to carry a cross and you'll be healthy and hearty. People will be looking at you without seeing their suffering, without seeing your cross, but they will be seeing grace upon grace upon you. Some people are like that. Learn how to embrace your suffering as a missionary. And that will help you to understand the reason why you are suffering, the reason why you are going through what you are going through. And it will become for you a sacrament of suffering. It doesn't last for long. God will change your condition in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, I'm talking to you. God will change your position. God will change your position in the mighty name of Jesus. Your suffering will turn to success. And your pain will turn to peace and prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. Verse 28 to 30 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. Listen to this. All, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. According to his purpose. Not according to our own purpose. 
but according to his own purpose. Romans chapter 8, chapter 8 verse 28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. That's why I always ask you, ask God, what is the reason why you are placed here? For what reason am I going through this? For what purpose have you placed me in this situation, in this condition? For what purpose have you placed me here? We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. For those who for knew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those who he justified, he also glorified. Say amen, somebody. Paul's letter to the Romans. Chapter 8, from verse 28 to 30. There is a reason for everything. There is a purpose for which you are going through what you are going through. God will elevate your status in the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes you say, for how long? There was a young girl that survived a... Uh, 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 a head a, a surgery. There was a tumor in the brain. And after that, they discovered another tumor. What will you tell that girl? What will you tell that man that was going through cancer and the, the, the person thought that the whole thing was over and then they, they went for test and they found another cancer in that man's house, in body. What will you tell the person? Thinking about remission. Keep on believing God. For better, for worse. Your sickness will not be in vain. It will not end in death but in life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes you may think that you are dying. But you are not dying. Don't die before you are dead. Don't die before you are dead. Do not die before your death, child of God. Keep living and keep believing. When the time comes, then it will be a, a safe and peaceful transition. There is eternal life for those that believe in God. This life is temporal. We are living in an ephemeral world. Think about many people that Jesus cured. Many people that Jesus healed. It was for a purpose. For his mission. To prove that he came from his father. All of them are not alive today, child of God. All the people that Jesus rose from the dead. Including Lazarus. The lepers. The ten lepers. Peter said, Law, all of them are no longer alive today. It was for a purpose. For what reason was all those miracles? For a purpose. For the mission of Jesus Christ. It was for a purpose. When it came for John the Baptist to die, he was in prison and beheaded. And Jesus was in this world. John the Baptist came for a purpose. He was imprisoned. He was beheaded. And Jesus was alive. More than Mary was on earth. But John still went up to heaven. When the time came. Sometimes you say, oh, is, is Jesus not here? Yes, we are human. But don't lose focus of our faith. What I'm telling you is not easy. I will not deceive you. 
I want miracle for everybody. I want healing. But I don't want to deceive you. Jesus said, take up your crosses daily and follow you. And follow me. If he wants to perform miracle, he performs a miracle. For a purpose. For a purpose. And when that purpose is accomplished, everything takes place. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9 says, The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Look at that. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9. The heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. Everything anchors on God. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 says, As for you, you meant evil against, against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are together today. God has a purpose for each and every one of us. God knows why he punished the devil. Hebrew chapter 12 verse 7 to 13 says, It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. And I put as daughters too. For what sons and daughters are there whom his father does not discipline. If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Look at that. Hebrew chapter 12 from verse 7 to 13. Every family, our parents disciplined us for a purpose. There is a reason why your daddy is spanking you. Why your mommy is spanking you. For you to be a good boy. For you to be a good daughter. Every family loves their children. They chastise their children for a reason. They chastise their children for a, for a reason. For, a, for them to be somebody. Not to be a wayward. They chastise their children when they go astray. They have reason for doing that. That's the reason why they chastise us. God has reason for disciplining us when we go astray. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirit and life? That's what the Bible is asking us today. If our earthly fathers could chastise us, Hebrew chapter 12 from verse 7 to 13, if our earthly fathers could chastise us, how much more about our Heavenly Father, our Father in Spirit? Our parents discipline us for a short time, as it seems best to them, but He disciplines us for our good, that we may share His holiness. Look at that. God disciplines us for, for good, for a purpose, for a reason, that we may share His holiness. Look at that. For the moment, all discipline seems painful, rather unpleasant. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Look at that. Hebrew chapter 12, from verse 7 to 13. For the moment, all discipline seems painful, rather than pleasant. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Many adults on this line, you have been chastised by your parents or the people you live with. And today you are reaping the fruit of the labor. You have your own family. And sometimes you tell them, Stories about how you were chastised by your grandparents and your parents 
depending on the country where you are coming from or by your teacher and so on. And some people say because of that, he or she has become somebody today for some people. So, sports people, for instance, wake up early in the morning for a reason. There is a reason why everybody does what he or she is doing. Sports people wake up early in the morning to run for a reason. Some run under the cold weather. Some run under the sun. Some run under the heat. And some run under the rain for a purpose. For some to toughen themselves for the task ahead as sportsmen and women. The children of the light have risen for fasting. Some are fasting to drive away principalities and powers in their family or friend's house or body. We have our reason for identifying with Jesus Christ, the Emmanuel, God with us. Everybody has a reason why he or she does what he or she is doing. We have a reason for doing what we are doing. We come to Jesus for protection, for blessing, and for salvation. People marry for a reason. People marry for a reason. Some marry because of love. Some marry because their, their age, their age mates are marrying, therefore they want to marry. Some people, they marry because their parents are telling them it's time for you to go and marry a wife. And they wake up. Some people don't even want to marry and they are not priests or religious. So you have a reason for doing what you are doing. People marry for a reason. Some marry because of money. Some marry because of a, a man or a woman is, a woman is be beautiful and a man is handsome. Ask your husband or wife tonight if you are still with your own. Why did you marry me? I know you are laughing by now. Yes, it's good that you laugh. Father Madi is on the line. Ask your husband or your wife, why did you marry me? Ask each other, are you still maintaining the reason why you married me? I'm asking this, 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 this question for that mutual love and understanding to continue to be massaged. I want you to be massaging your love and peace together every day. I am blessing your marriage for those that are still intact, for the ones that are now divorced and praying for your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. But for those that are still intact, I'm trying to massage your love in a special way tonight. Ask yourselves, are you still maintaining the reason why you married me? Look into your, your husband's eyes. Look into your wife's eyes and ask this question. Yes, I'm talking to you. You have a reason why you married this woman. You have a reason why this woman accepted you. Are you still maintaining the reason why? This is a serious question. Are you still maintaining the reason why? Think about it. You saw you are in law. When you were coming for this woman, you saw your in-law. You so much love your in-laws. What is going on now? What is the reason for all this katakata, all this tapsi tavi, all this catastrophe, all gene, all gene bivenka? What is the reason why all this? All you have to do is to contemplate about the past, meditate about the past, and then trace, trace your steps and see where things went wrong and try to walk it back and see if you can amend it. Some people don't do reflection. Some people don't examine their life and their family crisis. Are you still maintaining the reason why you married me? Ask your husband. Ask your wife. How can we make it work 
these are the questions you have to, you have to ask yourselves. How can we make it happen again? You start calling yourselves on the phone. You start waiting for each other to eat. Whatever that used to help people to love each other, start doing those things. And add more. Add more to it every day. Assignment I'm giving to you that each time you have to do something new. Or you can massage the old one and make, make it constant constantly in your persistence let it be consistent in your life that you call your wife you call your husband how is work how is work doing, going are you okay check, check, check your wife call her on the phone call your husband on the phone not when he call, when not when he calls you or she calls you. He said, "Why are you calling me? Stop that! That's a bad attitude. Stop that! Yes, I'm talking to you. Welcome her call with love. Welcome his call with love. If it is somebody that calls you now, you you will just relax your nerves and your energy, and you will be answering the person in a polite way. And when it is your husband, oh, get it. You back like a dog, but you're not a dog. If it is the, 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 the voice of your wife, you start shouting. Why are you doing this? Stop, stop waking up your adrenaline. I don't want you to have heart attack. The way you make your bed, you rely on it. The reason why you are attacking your wife every time, check it. The reason why you are attacking your husband, check on that. Stop raising your adrenaline. You are, you are taking a, a, a high blood pressure medication and you are, you are losing it. What is all this? God has a purpose for you too. Walk back to those things and try to make amend and to live longer. Anything that goes to money is secondary. How can we make it work? If you start by talking about money, then you are greedy. That is not love. Money is secondary in this your love. Love the person for who he is. Love the person for who she is. Then money is secondary. Money is secondary, child of God. I want you to be honest to yourself. If money is the problem, think twice about that marriage. When there is love, money will not be the problem. If you are telling yourself the truth, you will know that what I'm telling you is the truth. When there is love, money will not be the problem in that your marriage. But when there is no love, and that love is fading, then money becomes an issue. I repeat, when there is love, there will be no problem. But when there is no love, or that the love is fading away, then money becomes an issue. There are women that don't care about their salary. So far, the love in the family is, well, is flowing. There are men that don't care about money or their expenditure. Say there is no more love and peace. And when there is no more love and peace, you will see that every dollar you spend accounts. When when you <laughs> when there is no more love and peace, then every dollar you spend will be will be paining you. Your partner will be asking questions, saying that you have changed. <laughs> that you are no longer the man or woman I married because there is no money again. You do not know the reason why. Sometimes it's because one person has been on the receiving end while the other is being cheated. 
When someone says, I have had enough of this cheating, then hate and extramarital offense steps in. You'll be cheating somebody, cheating somebody, cheating somebody. That's the reason why you are cheating somebody. And then when the person says, calls you the name, he or she calls you and says, what's all this? This has been going on for years. Then you tell the person, you have changed. You don't even love the person. You love the money. Because the person is questioning you about the money. Yeah, you have, you have changed. Yeah, you have changed. Then your voices will be changing too. If you have that nice voice, why can't you use it for choir and praise God? Don't use it against your wife. Don't use it against your husband. You start raising voice unnecessarily, walking up your, yourself unnecessarily. It's not the reason why God brought you together. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. At your convenient time, read all this. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 says, Don't you know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said, the two will become one, one flesh. Think twice about it. Because devil knows how to separate husband and wife. And you'll be buying into the reason why you are doing what you are doing. And you think you are punishing your wife. You think you are punishing your husband. And you are bonding with prostitution and prostitutes. Be very careful. The more you go out to the world, you, be, you come back less a man. You come back less a woman. And you are no longer getting younger. You're not getting younger. Everybody, each day we are counting ourselves into the grave. Why can't you stick together and live longer and live our life and thank God for blessing you? It is said in the Bible, the two will become one flesh. Do not defy yourself. Because of money, because of katakata in your family, try to maintain peace. Do not defy your marriage. Do not pollute your sacred marriage. Resist the temptation. Save yourself the time and the energy to defend yourself or explain the reason why you did or still do what you are doing. A man that so much loved the wife was asked why he so much loved the wife. He said the reason was due to love. Since he married the woman, the man said he had peace of mind. And the wife does not even want him to spend extravagantly. That was the man's, the, the man's response to this man. That the, the, the wife controls everything. Even when he wants to to spend money on her. He says, no, 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 no. Keep it. The man was so happy. Happily married with the wife. And some people are so jealous of them. And they want them to be separated. No when external people are separating your love affair. Sometimes, I don't know why they brainwash certain men. And you start hating your wife for no just cause. The same thing is applicable to wives, respectively. A wife, someone was asked why he so much loved the husband. She said that the husband is trustworthy, caring, and lovable. So ask yourself, what is the reason why you so much love your husband? What is the reason why you so much love your wife? If the answer is positive, maintain those things. Keep doing those things that unite you. Keep those things that love you, that makes you love each other. What's your reason for hating your wife? What's your reason for hating your husband? Everybody has a reason. Know you that if you have a reason for doing what you are doing, that someone may also have a reason for his or her own action, but still choose 
to overlook all those things and overreact for peace to reign in that family. Always bear this in mind that you are not the only person that has the monopoly of reason why. You are not the only person that has the monopoly of the reason why. Some other person has reason why he or she responds or reacts. The same thing is applicable to siblings. Siblings, listen very carefully. Your father, for instance, whether alive or dead, your mother, for instance, whether alive or dead, each and every one of them, they have reason why they share things for their children. I take God, beg you, respect your father's will. Respect your mother's will. Do not res disrespect the living or the dead. Do not disrespect the living or the dead. Remember that today's reflection says, For I know the plans I have for you. Jeremiah chapter 29 from verse 11. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plan for welfare and not for evil. To give, to give you a future and a hope. Look at that. So what is your plan for your family? Peace and love or hatred. Hebrew chapter 12, remember verse 7 says, It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 to 9 says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Proverbs chapter 16 verse 33 says, The Lord is cast into the lap, but it's every decision, but it's every decision is from the Lord. So God decides whatever is happening in our life. Paul's letter to the Colossians chapter 3 from verse 23 to 25 says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Jesus, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done. And there is no partiality. Look at that. Proverbs chapter 16 verse, 6, verse 1 says, The plans of the heart belongs to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Look at that. Book of Psalm 1 verse 1 to 5 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day, meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. And its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Look at that. So, child of God, you have to listen to the inner wisdom of God. You have to be alive to reap the fruit of your labor. Let's go into prayer. Father in heaven, your children have gathered to present before you their petitions. Present before the Lord your petitions. Ask God for forgiveness. If the reason why you are punishing your wife or your husband is for no just reason, ask for forgiveness. Reconcile with your husband and your wife if it is reconcilable. If not, God takes care of everything. But for those that can do that, do that peacefully. Father Lord, I raise my hands of blessing at this altar to bless each and every one of us tonight. 
Bless every sibling. Bless them, O oh Father. Bless every family gathered here before you. Bless them, O oh Father. For you said in John 14, 13, that we shall bless in your name. And so, Father, I bless them. I bless them tonight with Jeremiah 29 from verse, 1, from, from verse 11. That the plan you have for them moving forward, O oh Father, will be that of peace, that of love, that of prosperity, that of divine protection in name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.